Accessibility is about making your website available for everyone, regardless of disabilities or impairments. I'm victorativimundo.com, and in this video, I will make an experiment to see if I can get a full score on accessibility using the Google PageSpeed Insights report. Accessibility wasn't really an issue in the 15th century. And I will do this without using any plugins or paid services. I'll start this experiment by importing a ready-made layout pack from Elegant Themes. So I'll start for Book Club. And we can go for Join the Club. So I click it and choose Use this layout. Okay, let's save this page without doing any changes to it. And I'll exit the Visual Builder. So now let's have a look at it. See the hero area with an image, some text, and a button. We have some blurbs here. We have a light background color, some more text modules, buttons, and we have our footer. To test the accessibility score on this page, I'll simply copy the URL and I'll head over to Google PageSpeed Insights. You can find the link to this in the description below the video, or you can just Google PageSpeed Insights and you will find it. So I'll paste my URL and I click Analyze. Now this is of course mostly used for testing the page speed performance, but as you can see, the second number here is for accessibility. So first we check for mobile, and um, I can mention just as a side note that this is a clean DV install. I have no cache plugin or optimization plugins, and I have done nothing to the images. And still we get an 84 out of 100 on speed performance on mobile. On desktop, I'll get 98. So that maybe ends the discussion about Divi being a slow theme. But let's focus on the accessibility score. And 66 out of 100 is far from good enough, I would say. So if we scroll down past the general performance score, we can get some more details on the accessibility. Here we have four different warnings in four different categories best practices contrast, names and labels, and navigation. So I'm going to go through them one by one and see what we can do with them using Divi. And my goal here is to get 100 out of 100 in accessibility score without using any plugins or paid services. So let's see if that could be done. So the first one, best practices, it says user scalable is equal to no. And that's used in the Meta name viewport element or the maximum scale attribute is less than five. Sounds a bit complicated, so if we click this button to expand, we can see that this is about zooming being disabled, and this can be problematic for users with low vision and that rely on screen magnification to properly see the content on the web page. So basically, this is about letting the, the visitor zoom on your page, maybe pinching on mobile devices, for example. And this is by default off in Divi. Let's fix this first issue. I'll head over to the blog post on divimundo.com. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll find the link in the description below the video. So here are all the links and resources that you need to improve your accessibility score with Divi. So I'll scroll down. And uh, we go to the first point. Enable zooming and scaling. Here we have a code snippet that you need to add to your functions.php file to enable zooming and scaling. So you need to have a child theme to do this because if you add this to your DB functions.php file, it will be overwritten the next time you update DB. So make sure that you have a child theme. And if you don't have one, you can just click this link to create one. So I'll start by copying this snippet and I'll head back to my WordPress dashboard. And now I'll go to appearance and theme file editor. 
So if you can find this link, it's probably because it's disabled in your security plugin, like iTheme security or WordPens. So you can either go to your security plugin settings and disable this, or even better, you can use an FTP client or the file manager on your web hosting account, because that is also a more safe way to edit your theme files. But I'll go to the theme file editor in this case, and I make sure that I'm editing my DB child theme, and I'll go to functions.php. And here I have some custom scripts from before, so I'm just scrolling past them. I go to the bottom, I add some space, and I paste the snippet. So this snippet will allow scaling and zooming to improve accessibility. And the maximum scale is 5. And if we go back to the PageSpeed Insights, it says that the attribute should not be less than 5. So that's why we have this number. I click update file and we go back to the page with insights and let's rerun the test. Before we had 66 out of 100 for our accessibility on mobile and 69 on desktop. I click analyze. Not bad for just adding a small snippet. We're up to 85 out of 100 on accessibility and 86 on desktop. So that's a good start, but I won't settle before I have a perfect score. So let's go back to the test results and scroll down. And now we can see that we have three issues left to solve. The second issue might be a little bit more easy to comprehend. It says that the background and foreground colors do not have sufficient contrast ratio. If we expand, we can see which elements that are low contrast. So this makes sense. Of course, some people with a limited vision can have a hard time to read this light pink red text on a light background. We also have the buttons and the footer link. So let's fix that by increasing the contrast. I'll head over to the blog post and I'll scroll down to the second chapter improving the colors contrasts ratio. So in here, I have a link to the color contrast analyzer where you can analyze the color and then pick one with the better contrast. So first I'll go back to the website and I'll get the hex code for the pink red color. You can take it from the heading and we have something. FF5D67. So I'll just copy that. I'll head back to the blog post and I'll click the link to the color contrast analyzer. So the foreground color, that's the text or the button elements that we need to change. So I'll paste the pink red color there. And the background, we can go for white because that's the lightest background color that we are using. And here we can see an example on small sample text and large sample text using our pink red color. And we can also see that uh, according to the WCAG standard, we fail in every area. Small text, large text, and the AA standard and the AAA standard. So to fix this, we can scroll up and we can grab this handle and we can simply make the color darker by dragging it. And you can see that just a small change made us pass the double A standard for large text and graphical objects. And if I keep on dragging, we should, yeah, there it comes. Now we pass three out of four. So I can keep on here, depending on which standard I need to fulfill. And there we go, we have passed all four areas. So I'll go for this text. B3000F. I'll copy this hex code and I'll go back to the website. And now maybe I can go for the links in the footer and I'll edit that text module. I'll go for design text. We have the link color. So now we can try to use the find and replace feature in Divi. So I right click this color. I choose find and replace. 
Now I want to find this original pink red color and I want to search in this section and I want to replace it with this color, a slightly darker one. And I want to replace all found values within every option type, not limited to text link color. I click replace. And we can see that the links are updated, so they have this darker red color. And if we scroll up, we can see that the blurb icons also got this darker red color. But not the buttons and not the blurb headings. So let's try to change them. I'll edit the blurb and let's go to the heading. I can click this. Let's right click this title color, find and replace. Let's replace it with a darker color. Replace all and click replace. Let's see. Now we have changed it for the blurbs, for the buttons, and for the footer links. And of course, I would recommend that you use the global presets feature in Divi to set this color globally on your website. And you can also use the global colors feature to change this site wide. But for now, I will save this page and uh, we will make a new test on the PageSpeed Insights. So I scroll up and we had 83 on mobile and 86 on desktop. So I'll hit Analyze. There we go, we are in the green zone. We have 90 out of 100 on accessibility for mobile and on desktop we are up to 91. So we're getting closer to our goal, the perfect score. So let's scroll down to see what's left. So there are links that do not have a discernible name. And this is about adding descriptive links and alt texts to your images. Because if you are blind, you probably use a screen reader that reads the content for you on the page. And uh, to describe an image, you need to add alternative text or text that can be read out loud. So we need to tell the visitor what this image is about. So let's head back to the website. And I'll go to my WordPress dashboard uh, and I'll head into the media library. Media library. So you can add all the texts here in the media library. And if you use DV image modules, you can go to the advanced tab and add all the texts there as well. So I think it's this image that I'm using in my menu. And as you can see, there is no alternative text here. For this one, I'll simply add DV window. Oops. If it would be a photo of you, you could probably add your name and maybe a description about the context briefly. So this text is really important for accessibility, but also for your SEO. So make sure that you have descriptive alternative texts. If your images are only for decorative purposes, you don't need to have an alternative text or rather you should have an empty alternative text. And background images, they are added by CSS, so they will not display an alternative text anyway. I'll just save this. And uh, now we can redo our test. So we had 90 on mobile and 91 on desktop. Okay, so that took less than a minute and we are up to 96 on accessibility for mobile and on desktop we have 96 as well. So let's iron out the last issue and that's the heading elements that are not in a sequentially descending order. And here we have a few examples. We have an H4, a heading 4 in a, in a blurb and here we have another blurb using an H4. And uh, here we have the heading for the footer, which is also a heading for. So in HTML, we have different heading levels from H1 to H6. Typically, you only have 
one h1 on a page the main heading and in this case it's probably this join the club and uh, the headings below should be descending so you can ha have h2 headings below the h1 heading so let's say that this would be an h2 and if this would have a subheading a chapter that's related to this heading it should be an h3 you should not skip headings so you should not go from an h2 directly to an h4 if you have an h3 you can have a subheading that's an h4 and then if you have a new section here that could be a new h2 and below that you can have an h3 and just to make it a little bit more complicated h tags the heading tags that's html and HTML is all about adding structure to your website. So that's really important for your accessibility score to use these headings correct. And the size and the font, that's CSS. So that's all about design and the visual part of it. So the important thing is that they are in the correct order. And in this case, we have a bunch of H4 headings that are not preceded by an H3 heading. So, for example, this is a blurb, and by default in Divi, a blurb has an H4 heading. But to have an H4 on top of an H2, in this case, doesn't make any sense, really. So there are different ways to uh, approach this. We could say that this is the actual heading, that should be an H2, and then this is a subheading, so this should be an H3. But it also depends on the context and the meaning of the heading. For example, a heading with the text included doesn't really make sense. You can think of it as a table of contents. Would you add this in a table of content list? Probably not. Now, this is just placeholder text because this is a layout pack with fake Latin. So we shouldn't be too focused on the actual words here. So it's more about the principle. But I would say that this one included might not even be a heading because it's just something aesthetical to have this above the, the real heading included in the membership because that communicates something. So I would probably make this one included not as a heading. I would go to the blur and I would move this from the title field because this will always be a heading and move it down to the body and style it here. But you could also, if you want to change the heading level of a blurb from an default H4, you can go to design title text and you can simply change it from the h4 to an h2 and now it will have the html tag h2 instead of an h4 if we just look at the google page bit test and the score this would solve the problem for this specific section but as i said before you should first think is this a heading at all would i add it to the table of contents if not make it a paragraph and then you can style it using the different uh, css styles or using the design tab settings in, in Divi, which uses CSS, of course. And is it a heading? Then you need to set the right level of heading and then you can style it. So in this case, I'll take the easy route and I'll set this to an H2. And this is also an H2. Okay, so then we have these blurbs to the right. And I would say that if this is an H2, this should be H3 because these are subheadings to this H2. So I'll go to the first blurb and the design tab, title text, and I'll change it from the default H4 to an H3. And now you can see that the design changed, so I can also change the title text size so it looks like before. So this is the CSS part. And now I can extend this style by right click in the top of the blurb settings. I click extend blurb styles all blurbs in this column which is this one and i click extend and let's save it and we move on and we'll do the same here we'll make this an h2 so it has the same level as join today so i'll go to design title text and i change it to an h2 okay we have also the footer these are h fours and uh, I think we should change that. We can see here an H4 to an H2. Let's style this. We can go to design, heading text. Let's have a look at how the 
page 4 was styled, the Hebrew font, and the size was 18. So let's go to the H2 and we call it Hebo and 18. And uh, we can try another trick here to um, extend the styling. We'll keep a right click in the top and I choose copy module styles. And I will close this one. Now I will hold my command key or control on PC and I will click this text module and I will keep on holding the command key and click the other text module and the third text module. And I will right click and I will choose paste module styles. And now I need to go into every single text element and change this from a heading 4 because this is HTML and this is not the design setting. So we change it to heading 2. And we do the same thing to community. H2. And the last one, contact. And I'll change that to an H2. Okay, let's save the page. And uh, let's see if we have missed anything. Go to the top, we have our 96 score on accessibility, and I'll analyze. And there we go, we have a full score on accessibility, a hundred out of a hundred. That's on mobile, and that's on desktop. So maybe that answers the question if Divi is a good theme for accessibility. And I would say it can be if you use it in the correct way. That's all for this tutorial, but there is much more that you can do to improve the accessibility of your website. And uh, in some sectors and some countries, you have to live up to the WCAG standards by law. And if this is the case, I can recommend that you check out the plugin Divi Accessibility Helper. So this is a really nice premium plugin that lets you take the accessibility work to the next level. And I'm not going to go through all the different features here, but you can find a link below the video where you can read more about this plugin. Feel free to like and subscribe and maybe leave a comment if you like this video. I'll see you next time for more tutorials coming your way. Thanks for watching.